I'm Nancy Kuntz, and I'm here with my colleagues, Natalie Gedeker, a nurse practitioner from uh, Washington University at St. Louis, and Melissa Gibbons, a genetic counselor at Colorado Children's Hospital. Uh, we're going to consider the consequences of delayed diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Natalie, what, what do you think are the most important consequences of delayed diagnosis for boys with Duchenne muscular dystrophy? Well, we don't have a cure for this disease, unfortunately. We're still having to put lots of work into it. But we do now have treatments that are likely to be more impactful when they're started earlier, when there's more healthy muscle tissue present. Um, some of those treatments we may talk about a little bit later, but they include steroids. We have um, some genetic-based therapies that uh, certain children may qualify for. And actually, some of those treatments, um, one in particular has an age-based restriction on it, where um, right now only children who are four to five years old can receive it. And sometimes we don't get a referral until a child is six, seven, unfortunately, if they live in a rural area or there's other reasons for delays. And so that would completely preclude um, that child from getting this particular genetic-based treatment. Um, I think the other big factor is that we start multidisciplinary care for patients immediately at diagnosis. So we start managing their respiratory, cardiac, orthopedic manifestations of the disease and really try to prevent those manifestations from happening, um, which best occurs the earlier we can intervene. And we also help families um, obtain any necessary equipment. We assist with the social work aspect of the disorder. Um, you know, this is a severe disease that can impact the financial and social well-being of the families. And um, so we really try to help and connect these families with the right resources. And, and any delay is, is a delay um, in their life, really. And all boys with Duchenne, eventually they do lose the ability to walk and they have respiratory and cardiac complications. And the earlier we can intervene, even with the supportive measures that we have, can hopefully delay the impact of these complications. I think that's an excellent summary, Natalie, that the, those really are the the things that make a difference about um, intervening early. Um, I think that uh, some of the things you mentioned that the supportive therapies help with in terms of um, multidisciplinary um, monitoring and orthopedic intervention, paying attention to bone health. Uh, so that even if people later on have complications with joints or with scoliosis, if they have healthier bones, it's much easier to <clears throat> intervene and try to um, um, have surgery or bracing or other therapies that would make a difference there. So no matter uh, whether we're just considering the uh, tried and true long-standing supportive treatments or the disease-targeted genetic ones that you began to discuss, all of these are much better um, uh, approached earlier. Uh, maybe, Melissa, you can um, add a little bit uh, from your point of view as a genetic counselor. How does um, genetic testing and counseling help with early diagnosis? I think that genetic counselors can help with an early couple of different ways. The first is that we can do a lot of education with providers surrounding when to order a test and the appropriate test. And the thing that I think we've seen a lot more over the last couple of years has been from our prenatal genetic counselors who are meeting families who are interested in more broad carrier screening the prenatal counselors are allowing families to be aware of their risk when maybe they hadn't noticed it because they did not have a family history prior to undergoing carrier testing. This allows these individuals to either achieve a prenatal diagnosis or testing soon after birth, which allows them to access earlier care. Those are, those are very important points, uh, Melissa. I think that both for the um, the family that has presented the nuclear family, um, as well as for the their uh, extended family and relatives who might be carriers, um, that uh, those discussions with the genetic counseling and uh, the investigations uh, in a targeted way are very, very helpful at um, identifying uh, 
pregnancies at risk for uh, a dystrophinopathy, mm -hmm. and with the, with that early identification, leading to the early intervention that we've been talking about.